That's 5.30, and we'll call our meeting to order for Monday, November 5th. Roll call, please, Carl. Council Member Remley. Here. Ronain. Here. Lundsman. Here. Slate Hansen. Johnson. Here. Bunsness. Here. Bolson. Rucks. Mayor Leibson. Here. Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We need a motion to approve last week's minutes. Moved. Second. Motion, Munson, a second by Remley. If there are no changes, all in favor of approving, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. For open forum tonight, Casey Weismantel from the CVB is with us. Welcome, Casey. How's the hunting been for you? <laughs> Work gets in the way at times, but mm -hmm. no, the hunt's been good. Uh, now that some of the crops are coming out of the field, uh, hunters are seem to be picking up a few more birds, so that's that's on the plus side. So, uh, thank you for letting us come talk to you tonight. We wanted to come. <coughs> sorry, battling a sore throat. We wanted to come and uh, talk to you on quarter three with the Aberdeen Area Convention of Visitors Bureau. Uh, tell you a little bit about what we've been doing, uh, hard at work in the office, uh, on the marketing side of things and the social media side of things, and then some numbers to lay out there uh, to help support that. Uh, I gave you guys all a packet you have there in front of you. Um, I'm going to kind of skip over the first page. That kind of tells you all who we are, what we do. We've recapped that twice now. I think, I hope we have it handled at this point. Uh, second page, starting out a little bit about more of our marketing campaigns. <clears throat> uh, print advertising, uh, backing off a little bit on print this year, uh, trying to bring in a little more of that digital effort and the AdWord campaigns. We've been working with production monkeys here in town. Uh, print's not dead by no means. Uh, still partnering with South Dakota Tourism. Um, some of our efforts that we have put in place with some of our regional marketing uh, entities, Pheasants Forever, uh, Good Housekeeping, Family Fun, Red Book, all of those garner a lot of leads for us. So we're still uh, continuing that strong partnership there. Uh, digital marketing this year, like I said, um, working with Midco Cable here in Aberdeen. Uh, what is digital marketing? Anytime they can take over your web service. Uh, in home or track you by a mobile mobile device uh, that that midco marketing um, they t we can pick the target areas where we want that marketing to drop um, in that three hour radius outside of Aberdeen uh, maybe pushing a little farther to Minneapolis and beyond uh, trying to bring in those overnight stays uh, in into the region uh, works best for vacation travelers uh, hunters on the on the other side of things are a little tough to track because they come from all over uh, we just had two gentlemen in the office this afternoon from Michigan uh, here to chase some long tails so um, <coughs> might be a little tougher to track them down uh, AdWord marketing advertising like I said we're working with production monkeys here in town what are AdWords how do they work uh, we're still trying to wrap our head around that a little bit as well uh, utilizing their expertise uh, but the way AdWords work is you pay per ad word. Uh, so if you want to market uh, South Dakota vacation or affordable South Dakota vacation or family friendly vacation, you can pay for those ad words. So when somebody types that into their search menu, uh, Aberdeen is going to pop up as a destination. So it, it's a good way to uh, market uh, subliminally, well, I can't say that word, subliminally, uh, to market Aberdeen to those people traveling and, and looking for those vacation destinations. Uh, as we've thrown in the office, you can do some guerrilla marketing at times where you can pay for Black Hills vacation. You can pay for that as well and, and will pop up just as the same. Uh, the downside about that is AdWords can work against you as well. So just as we can try to steal that traffic, they can steal it from us as well. Uh, but so far, uh, working with uh, Production Monkeys and the AdWord campaign seem to be, it's a learning curve for us. It's, this is new this year. Uh, the numbers aren't quite there to support it like we were hoping, uh, but we're, we're seeing what, how that will total out uh, by the end of the year. Um, cable TV ads, again, uh, partnering with Midco Cable. Uh, we did some production work with Production Monkeys, doing some uh, commercials a few years back. And they roll those out in select target areas. Um, and that's a little bit about uh, print and, and marketing efforts. I'm going to turn it over to Laura here to give us a little example of what we have in place for the third quarter. And then I'll pick up social media after that. Yep. 
In the third quarter, um, our marketing efforts were more targeted toward the hunting side, um, simply because third quarter is coming to the end of the vacation side. And so um, I did try a couple new things this year to market um, the 2019 vacation package that we put together. Um, decided to go with some more regional type publications. And what I mean by regional is local publications in other areas. So Brookings Summer Fun newspaper insert. Um, Watertown has one similar. The Sioux Falls Shopping Network coupon book. That honestly was the best results that we had of anything that we've run, honestly, um, as far as cost per entry. And so that's something that we would like to pursue um, and really expand for next year is partner with some of those smaller, smaller publications in larger areas, because those seem to be very effective for us. Um, the digital campaign, as Casey said, that wrapped up um, the end of July. And with the Midco campaign, we were able to garner about 839,000 impressions. And um, even though, as Casey said, the numbers weren't really there as far as results for us, concrete results, the click-through rates were great, the conversion rates were great, the ad intera interaction rates were great. And with digital marketing, a lot of times that first year is more of just an image year. You're just kind of getting your name out there. You're getting yourself in front of people. And then um, hopefully the next time they see that ad, they will click through and give you their information and make the conversion happen. So we're happy with the amount of impressions that we got. The amount of interactions that we were seeing was great. Um, we are starting to research in quarter three, starting to research a little more expansion on the radio efforts that we started to make this year, found that we have great success in the radio markets in Eastern South Dakota and Western Minnesota. So that's something we like to look forward to 2019. Um, did our Glacial Lakes and Prairies grant recap that we do every year. Uh, we're always able to always able to prove ourselves to them so that's always good um started updating the community guide for 2019 and completely redesigned that this past year so this year we'll just be making updates to that and started making uh, researching new ways to make connections with travel bloggers writers and influencers on social media that is the way of the future and the future is now so we need to jump on board with that um, people are people are craving that content they want to read about your destination they want to read about experiences that other people had when they came here and they you know people believe their friends people people believe people that other be people believe so um so we need to develop those relationships and so we've started researching um a network called the midwest travel network is it's a group of travel bloggers that is based out of iowa that actually started having a regional conference this past spring done in Iowa. Next year, they're having it up in Medora, North Dakota. And so that's a group that we've decided that we want to really foster a relationship with and see where that goes, kind of see where that those relationships can go, how we can build those um, and, and the results of that. Because like I said, that is where we need to be. Um, we did get some earned media. Um, sent an itinerary and photos to a couple different publications. Um, the train depot was featured on USA Today's 25 must-see buildings in South Dakota. So that was exciting. That's because of us. It totally is because of us. <laughs> hunting, like I said, we did a little more with hunting, of course, um, trying to get those last-minute, those guys that are making those last-minute plans in July and August, trying to really capture their attention and get them to come here. Um, because if they're coming to South Dakota, they may as well just head up here to do their hunting. Um, we, again, advertised in the Minnesota Twins yearbook, in the Minnesota Vikings yearbook, and those are the publications that you pay $13 for at the game. So we're there. We're in there. Um, we were in the South Dakota Department of Tourism Great Getaways mailer. 
we were in the Pheasants Forever 2018 fall issue and the super issue. And I can tell you those dollars are justified spending on those ads in those publications. We get the most bang for our buck being in that national publication. Midwest Hunting and Fishing, that's a regional um, publication out of Sioux Falls. The Iowa Sportsman, and of course, South Dakota Magazine. We've gotten to to really know those gals down there at South Dakota Magazine. We've got a great relationship going with them, and people are responding. And we know that because we ask them on the form that they fill out when they enter their information. We say, hey, where did you hear about us? And if it was a printed publication, which one was it? So that way we know... Are we doing the right thing by being in this publication? And nine times out of ten, the answer has been yes. So that's been really exciting to see. Um, some more earned media that we were able to garner was um, a couple of website ads on the Iowa Sportsman website. And then also Robbie Kroger, um, he has a, a video series called The Blood Origins. He is originally from West Africa, and he actually traveled to Aberdeen to do a documentary on the pheasant canteen and the history of the pheasant sandwich in Aberdeen. We actually have that, um, so we'll go ahead and watch that. We get volume. So this is a story that you don't know about, but you need to. If you're an American, a patriot, a hunter, this is a story that you need to tell your friends. It's a story about how hunters and the community came together to become the patriots that we all know that we want to be. Let me set the scene for you. It's 1943. It's the height of World War II. We are sending dads, sons, mothers, daughters off to war. Aberdeen, South Dakota is the epicenter for all of these folks going off to war. The train tracks come right through the center of Aberdeen, South Dakota. The community got together under austerity measures rationing of gas, rationing of food. They wanted to do something for the soldiers. So they did. They fed them. They fed them daily. 500 to 800 soldiers a day were fed. And how did they feed them? The hunters of the community. We can use the limited shotgun shells that we have and we can get the meat that we can give to the canteen that then can be cooked for the soldiers. That's how the pheasant sandwich was born. This pheasant sandwich became legend. This pheasant sandwich was what they were known for. The soldiers knew about it before they even arrived. The pheasant sandwich still gets served today. Hunters arrive in Aberdeen, South Dakota for the pheasant opener. They get a pheasant sandwich. And they get a little taste of history, a little taste of what this country and hunters did back in 1943 for this country when they needed it most. I remember when the, watching the troops go running in and out of here when I was a kid. Vera, I want you to tell me of your first experience in the Pheasant Canteen. Can you remember that, the first time you walked the in? The first time? The first time. I remember working at the canteen at a very early age because my mother was one of those three or four founders of the canteen. And I had brothers in the service, and so the canteen was especially, especially near and dear to our hearts. And I lost a brother in the battle, the Battle of the Bulge, 
in, in Europe. And when I think of, of those days, and I think of sending your son, your boy, off to, to do battle, because that's what they were going to do. Uh, I wonder sometimes how women do that. And then I think the good Lord gave them an extra touch of something. As we have, have talked about, the game wardens didn't really pay any attention. If, the, if they were hunting for pheasants that were coming to the canteen, there was no limitation on what they could bring in. And they had drives for pheasants. About a, two blocks from here, there was a locker storage space. And they would take the pheasants over there and they would get them cleaned and they stored them at that locker. And then as the women needed them, they could go and get them. And uh, that was really helpful at that time because storage, you know, refrigeration was not as great as it is now. Be able to give the sandwiches to the soldiers. Then yourself, tell us. Well, that was my part of doing the war. I felt like I was being really doing something. A little town over in Britain, South Dakota. We were far from the war. This is the only part of the war we saw with the soldiers and sailors and the Marines who come here, uh, get off the train. That was it. We we're doing our bit. You became one of those soldiers. Yes, and I was one of them. So tell me about that. Tell me about you actually coming in on the train in, into this and getting your own pheasant sandwich. Oh, yes, that was wonderful. My folks met me here at the train, and uh, I said, I've just got to go and eat each of the sandwiches that I helped make two years before that. And uh, that was it. And we've had reunions ever since of the canteen women. We, every year we have reunions. These four are the, are the last, and they helped serve sandwiches too when they were young high school girls. I just remember the train coming in, and we always were alerted that it was like two miles out or something, because we wanted to be at the ready. Because when that train rolled in, the door opened up and they just, they were just out of their pell-mell and they had heard about these pheasant sandwiches. And I, I don't honestly remember how they heard, but they knew that when they got to Aberdeen, there was this thing called a pheasant sandwich. And yet here that, you know, and I, I just will never forget the days that I spent at the canteen. They were wonderful, wonderful memories. All of these women were heroes, were patriots. But Miss Bonnie, Miss Bonnie not only was a patriot in serving sandwiches to those soldiers, but she then gave it all up to become a patriot on the front lines. Tell me how you started in the canteen and what made you want to enlist? Oh. Tell me that story. Yes. For when I was high, in high school, I lost four of my classmates in the war. And so that's, they all were killed. And, and so that's why I wanted to join the service. Wow. Patriotic reasons and many other reasons. From me, and everybody else, we just say thank you, Miss Bonnie. Talk about goosebumps when you get to see those interviews happening live with those people that come in and, and talk to those ladies. It makes me choke up right now just thinking about it. 
Um, so the hunting um, digital campaign also ended the end of September, and the um, the digital campaign garnered 680,000 impressions in Chicago and Kansas City, Missouri areas, and the AdWords um, generated 133,000 impressions. So we got in front of a lot of eyes, hopefully a lot of new eyes, and hopefully we'll see some of those guys and gals um, next hunting season. And thank you for allowing us to play that. I, I know it does add some time to your docket, but I think it's something that definitely needed to be played. Um, social media side of things, looking forward to that. I'll be real brief. Uh, we've utilized social media in the office very, very well, um, directing people back to the website so we can garner those website impressions. But not only so we can garner those impressions or those website hits, but so we can capture their email addresses. Why do we do that? So we can communicate with them at a later date. Um, whether that be through contests or posts or whatever it might be, we're always trying to push people back to that website traffic uh, so we can generate that visit or that click and then, and then capture their email address at a later date. Uh, looking at July, August, and September, uh, 29,900 in July, 11,181, 6,398. July through September, that uh, totals out to 30,503. Uh, I'll just give you totals if you guys don't mind. Uh, page views, we're looking at 51,770. And downloads. Downloads were really big this summer because we had some coupons and incentives and, and some just extra ways once we're at the website to garner that visit a little bit longer, but then we gave them incentive to download. Uh, there was 34,000 downloads. What could that be? It could be a form. It could be a coupon. It could be something, something that engaged that visitor uh, to our website. So looking forward to 18, 2018 versus 2017, uh, 30,503 visits versus 20,934 uh, 51,000 page visits uh, versus 38,000. Uh, just to do some math, we saw a 32 uh, 32 increase between 2017 and 2018 um, in the visits, and then we also saw a 27 percent increase in page views uh, during that same time. So the incentives that we're utilizing in the office, whether it's social media or the marketing or the print media and marketing, we're trying to direct that traffic back to Aberdeen and the community and the Aberdeen Community website. So uh, with that being said, uh, you can see some numbers. The numbers are working good in our favor. I'm going to let Leighton talk a little bit more about social media. Good evening. Uh, I'll keep mine quick after the movie there. Um, even though we saw increases pretty much across the board except for Twitter, uh, we've come to recognize in our three years uh, with the CVB that uh, the third quarter usually sees a downtick uh, as far as uh, social media. Uh, summer activities have wrapped up. Uh, you know, people have entered back into school. And, uh, but uh, like I said, generally that'll start picking up. Uh, we start promoting northern events, uh, uh, community theater events. We start getting promoting uh, packages for the spring. So uh, third quarters, uh, even though the numbers are up there, it, it's a little slower for us. But uh, currently right now we're uh, just over 13,700 likes on Facebook. Uh, considering three years ago we were, you know, when we first started it was uh, right around 8,600. So it's, it's continuing to increase. And as I've mentioned in prior uh, presentations, uh, we're trying to build a base because every person that likes us, anytime they share us, you know, it's a multiply effect. Um, our current reach through the third quarter is uh, almost uh, 2.1 million. Uh, we saw a reach of, in the third quarter of just a little over 1 million. Uh, but that's still a little down compared to last year, and I still asterisk. Uh, we had the Globetrotters were here, and that was a hot ticket in Aberdeen that uh, last year. Um, on the Twitter side, uh, <laughs> I see I failed to, uh, there's no increases when you put a minus. Um, <laughs> but uh, Twitter, based off of our demographics, uh, it's basically women, uh, 30 to 45, and uh, they're not quite using Twitter like they used to. So... There's a little downtick there as well. Uh, something that's been unique this quarter, 
um, is we've done some cross promotion between the Aberdeen's uh, social media and the Hunt Fish, obviously with the hunters coming to town. And a, a unique occurrence happened here about oh, a little over a week ago. Uh, we gave away some uh, uh, cookbooks for hunters and we had a winner. And the next day, our bell on the door rang. Here was the winner. He was here hunting from Kansas. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of a unique thing. So the fact that he was probably out in the field and got a ding on his phone. <laughs> uh, anyway, but here he came and got his cookbook. Uh, some of the more uh, productive posts we've had, uh, the wings are always good for us. Uh, they allow us to give away tickets as far as, uh, as part of packages. The Storybook Land Festival was real good. Obviously, we had the fair, which is always huge for Aberdeen. Uh, actually, between the two quarters, second and third, we had uh, just about 100,000 in reach uh, total. Uh, we're currently, it's still live, the 2019 uh, Aberdeen Vacation Package. But you see there uh, in front of you, we had one post. Uh, that garnered 20,000 in reach in itself. And again, what that was uh, prompting the people to do was to go to our website to sign up. And, uh, and that's proven to be- And they did. And it's <laughs> proven to be well. And the other one that uh, was real, uh, uh, worked real well for us was the promotion of the one millionth rider. That kind of carried over the second and third quarters. And again, that was uh, between the two quarters, that was roughly about 90,000 in uh, reach on that one. Some things we've got coming up yet. Uh, we've got the, we're continuing the 2019 vacation package. That'll uh, close out December 31st. Uh, we already have in the can, but we're not rolling it out yet, a, a package for 2020. Um, in addition, like I said, we'll continue with the wings. Uh, northern events are always good for us, athletics, plays, musicals, and the, uh, uh, excuse me, <coughs> the um, Aberdeen Community Theater events. And um, the Aberdeen Area Arts Council has one coming up in January. I can't say anything about it yet, but uh, that'll be a nice package. And then the last page, you just see some visual examples of <coughs> some other posts we've done. So. Okay. Any questions up till now, so far? Uh, some of the other things we have on the docket, as well as our convention services we provide, I uh, hope you guys all know what we do. Uh, we try to help provide uh, additional services to meetings, conventions, reunions, uh, what have you, as they're here in Aberdeen, whether that be a visitor packet, name tags, uh, group tours, spouse tours, uh, registration assistance we're, we're there to help uh, lend that hand and and give that uh, that guide uh, that guide feeling along the way uh, looking at some of the meetings and events and conferences that we held in the third quarter uh, reunions were big July August and September is reunion time in Aberdeen uh, some Lucas oil events that were held um, some some basketball or sorry baseball tournaments that were held as well uh, but reunions was kind of the biggest thing that took over uh, July, August, and September. But I did provide a little quick list of uh, some of the stuff that we held. And the stuff that made the list are things that we had interactions with. There's a lot of other events that are held in Aberdeen that we maybe just promote on social media or just they may pop into the office and grab some quick visitor packets. They don't necessarily make our list. These are the big ones that took some time and effort to research to bring to town uh, to give that extra uh, effort uh, to make them feel accommodated while they're here. So please take a look at that. Um, travel show schedule, as you can see, we wrapped up 2018 travel show in August. Uh, we hosted uh, Pheasant Fest in Minneapolis, Bismarck, Fargo, Minneapolis, and Game Fair two weekends back to back. Uh, gave us the potential impression or reach of 135,000 people that we may have come in contact with. So those are people that we are standing at the other side of the table trying to sell the idea, the concept of come vacation or hunt in Aberdeen and the surrounding area. So we get that one-on-one -on -one interaction. Uh, looking forward to 2019, uh, Minneapolis, the St. Paul Sports Show, St. Cloud Sports Show, Bismarck Pheasant Fest is in Schaumburg, Illinois next year. 
and then Fargo, Minneapolis, and then Game Fair back to back. These are some of our strongest shows that we've garnered the best reach uh, for that potential visitor and potential hunter coming to Aberdeen. Um, but we look forward to those shows again. Um, looking forward to the rest of, I know, sorry, I'm taking up you guys' time. I apologize. Uh, looking at occupancy tax numbers for the third quarter, as you can see, uh, July, August, and September were good were good months for us, uh, helping us rebound from being in the hole. Um, you know, with the year to date difference in July of behind, we're minus two percent. August minus a half percent, and then September coming up to three quarter percent above. Uh, those occupancy numbers. Anytime somebody stays in Aberdeen, they pay a two dollar occupancy tax. Those are our best gauge on gauging visitors coming to Aberdeen. Um, with that being said, we try to make sure the hotels are full all year long, but there's just some things that happen that we just can't control. And I still left the example in here of, in July, we were supposed to host the USATF track and field event that should have brought 2,500 to 3,000 athletes to Aberdeen. Uh, with the re, uh, renovations of NSU, or sorry, of Central's track, that's out of our control. We had to pass it up. We're still in the works of working with Galen Lang and Lynn Naki and NSU and NSU's new coach uh, to try to bring that event back to Aberdeen. But once you lose something or it steps aside, it may take you three, four, five, six years to get back into the rotation. And that's why it's so critical that we we don't lose things, especially to things we just can't control. Um, SIC codes, we have those for quarter three as well, July, August, and September. As you can see, numbers were good there as well. Um, August and uh, September were strong across the board. Um, going down to that year-to-date total, July just being 2.2% behind last year, August and September being above last year's totals. Uh, so those are some good numbers for us to track as well. Uh, visitor center activity, um, finally getting a chance to total that out. Uh, looking at 2017 compared to 2018, 2018 was up. Why? Because we did what we needed to do. Uh, we marketed the city. We marketed to those visitors to bring them to Aberdeen. I, I honestly think our 2019 vacation giveaway package was a huge home run. We've always been wondering, what can we do out at Wiley Park and Storybook Land with that bottleneck of people coming through the front door and out the back door? What can we do to capture their interest? And we come up with this 2019 vacation giveaway all they had to do is sign our guest book and, and put their email address down, and they're automatically registered. So I think that gave people a chance to stop, pick up that community guide, pick up that Glacial Lakes guide, pick up that Dakota Prairie Museum brochure, but it allowed us to slow them down long enough to get that information in their hands. That's the same thing we do at the travel shows. We give away, give away uh, a vacation giveaway or register to win the gun. We just want them to slow down long enough to get that information in their hands. So you can see with that being said, we saw an 8% increase in traffic. My hat goes off to our volunteers that work our visitor center out there. They put in 345 hours of visitor center staff, not paid staff, visitor center staff. And that equals to just about $8,500 of, of volunteer staff. Um, so hats off to, to Rita for putting, uh, manipulating the schedule to make sure it works in everybody's best interest but uh you know we had we had a good third quarter and and we're looking forward to to a strong fourth quarter and with your help we'll, we'll definitely get there so i apologize for going on as long as i did I, I just thought this was information that was needed to be known um if you guys have any questions i'll definitely try to answer them doing lots of stuff takes a lot of time I yes, just can say uh, you see the word increase a lot. Uh, uh, that, well, we like to spell that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great thing. Uh, I thought your Facebook creative was uh, excellent. I had one question for yes, you. Yes, sir. Uh, Don't even point it out. Get your kilt on? Yeah. That Is that you or a doppelganger? <laughs> I didn't know anything about that. And all of a sudden, Leighton comes into my office. He's like, "Are you? you got a pretty good sense of humor, don't you? And I'm like... I think I do. And Photoshop. He Photoshop my head on a kilt, and I'm like, beautiful. Run with it. I don't care. So, <laughs> I think their attendance was up. So, <laughs> well, it's no wonder. Uh, well, thank you for allowing us to come present. And and if you have thank any you. questions, you guys obviously you know where our office is, and you're always welcome. Keep so. doing it. All right, thank keep you. coming. Yep. Thanks. See us. Nice work. Okay, next on our agenda is uh, our consent.
calendar. Uh, the original calendar included uh, a person applying for a license uh, for private security. Uh, that has since been withdrawn, so under A1, uh, cross off that. Otherwise, uh, entertain a motion on the rest that's there. Ooh. Second. Motion Ronane and second by uh, Remley. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Uh, under new business tonight, uh, on our agenda is uh, an ordinance uh, revising the uh, city code relating to public nuisances. Uh, just a, a quick little background on, on why this is here. Uh, this is not an effort uh, by city government to, uh, uh, to Bigfoot uh, people and to uh, impose uh, more government control on them. Or it was not something really that's originated uh, with people in city government. This is a consequence of year after year of complaints by people in the city who have neighbors uh, whose properties is an obvious eyesore and a problem for the neighborhood to everyone, but those situations were not specific enough connected to our nuisance ordinance to where we could do anything about it, and people have asked the city to revise the nuisance ordinance to give us the opportunity to do that and and this has uh, happened over the years so the result of that is a proposed ordinance uh, which would change some of the definitions and the practices and uh, the enforcement uh, throughout the city uh, we do have three council members missing and uh, I've talked with uh, Alan, who has talked to some other uh, members of the council, uh, with the indication that I guess what we would like to get done tonight is uh, make it known uh, the language and the potential changes that are in this, but forego uh, uh, entertaining a motion for first reading tonight uh, uh, because we're not really ready for it and because we are missing three council members. So. Uh, uh, Alan, without a motion, you know, maybe you could just uh, uh, convey your thinking on uh, why we want to put this off, and uh, uh, you know, how much of it you'd you'd want to talk about yet tonight, or do you want to just get the information out? Sure, I think the main uh, interest here is having um, just casting our net and letting people know that uh, there is some proposed language here that will be new, and. Um, I think it's going to be important for us to understand the impact of some of this new language. Uh, if we codify some of these um, items, especially uh, there's a subsection here in C18 that talks about nuisance parking and storing, and that will be relevant to uh, people who are watching or are going to read about um, our agenda tonight. It relates to parking or storing any vehicle, camper, trailer, or watercraft outside in the yard areas adjacent to a street and on the lawn or ground surface surface other than on a paved or gravel parking surface or driveway um, area and so that would be um, going forward a violation um, it's important that people understand that and um, this time of year just seasonally looking at um, if this were to be something that were enforced uh, we're looking at I think a great number of citizens that have uh, a yard set up where they have something parked. I think this is a very, a fairly common thing, especially in certain parts of town. And um, this is not a time of year where you want to be um, trying to arrange for or on short notice budgeting for uh, a concrete pad, a cement pad. Um, there's some costs entailed. There's um, going to be a lot of demand, I think, just for uh, paving and, and uh, gravel. So. Um, I would propose that we take this uh, up seriously in the spring and uh, put this on our calendar in March of 2019 um, and look at that. Um, if there's any discussion on any other parts of the ordinance, um, I would welcome those. Um, but in the main, uh, section, subsection C18 was concerning just because of the, uh, the effects. Uh, I would actually like to have, if possible, um, code enforcement team um, do some ride arounds and uh, maybe quantify, um, just see how uh, extensive this would impact uh, people. I think uh, there are a lot of people that have one or more 
uh, as just trying to live their best possible life, enjoy the recreational opportunities we have here uh, with a trailer to get away on a weekend or with a, a boat. Um, there's a lot of storage and not everyone's blessed with, you know, a three stall garage uh, or adequate space. So they're doing the best they can. And, um, you know, uh, this is something I think we just need to look at. And um, if we can get some numbers, then we can understand, have a better idea and make judgments accordingly. You know, the uh, comments from the council, I, I guess, um, it, it was always my uh, presumption with this that regardless of, of when or in what uh, language it was passed, that there would be a long lead-in to give people an opportunity to comply regardless. So I guess the question would be uh, whether we go through the uh, procedure of uh, passing the ordinance here this fall and allow for a uh, six month, let's say, uh, time period before it's implemented to give people a chance to comply, or uh, if we if we do wait till March or April, are are we then waiting another six months after we pass it? Uh, I guess my preference would be to deal with it now and allow for an adequate time. Uh, but uh, I'd, I'd Rob, you were not. You know, I had exactly that same thought. That isn't. Wouldn't it be a service to the to the? If the thought was to to wait until March, then we pass it, and it's effective in April. <coughs> we're not doing anybody much of a favor. Uh, if we do discuss it, we take action now, and we postpone enforcement until July. I think maybe that's a better way to to uh, take care of at least one of the issues that you. Bring up, Alan. What about the issue of, of uh, at least understanding how widespread um, this situation is? Can we have, uh, I, I would recommend that we have uh, those code enforcement teams at least find some of the numbers mm -hmm. and we can have a discussion well before March, maybe even three or four weeks from now. Would, would that work, Brett? Yes, we can okay. do that. Yeah. And, you know, procedurally, if we did bring this back here yet this fall and you know, a motion was made to postpone until March, you know, that would be, you know, subject to the council to decide. We don't, you know, three of them aren't even here tonight. So uh, 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 I guess my, uh, my suggestion would be to, to uh, uh, bring this back to the, to the full council after we've had uh, a week or two uh, for hopefully we can get the American News to uh, help us publicize what's in here. And also it's it's on the website for people to look at or would be? Would be? Yeah, it's on the website under agenda, but we could put it in the distinctly different area so when you okay. have the front page, you could see it. Okay. Um, I'd be happy to do that. So then when it came back, if a majority of the council still wanted to wait till March, a, a motion to that effect would be in order. Uh, if the rest of the, if a majority of the council wants to deal with it now, uh, then we would we would do that, so we would retain that option. So. Are there any other ways that we can get the information out? I'm not saying that the American News doesn't have a wide reach, but I believe there's a lot of individuals out there that will be impacted by this that will not be reading the paper. I'm not a Facebook guy, but is this a, is this something where Facebook would? Our Facebook uh, expert uh, on the council isn't here tonight. Uh, but uh, maybe we could get Jennifer to uh, to uh, distribute this on Facebook for one thing. Well, sure. the um, Everdeen PD has their Facebook sure. page. I mean, they're going to be the ones. I mean, maybe, I don't know. They're not going to be enforcing it, but it seems appropriate okay. that it could go there. I, I think the important piece here is. I mean, this is this set. This section is pretty. It's a it's a big change, mm -hmm. and even, it's going to impact people. And I just don't, you know, the pressure will be on. And so we pass this, we enforce this, and then all of a sudden we will see the the crowd that will show up. And I, I think it's just better for us to be a little slower on this. Believe me, some of the some of those other sections, there's some people who have very strong opinions opposing those as well. <laughs> And, yeah, and well, actually, those are the ones that have generated most of the uh, of, of the momentum to, to to try to do this. So, mm -hmm. so would uh, uh, bringing this back in two weeks be too soon? Well, two weeks is when 
It's the 19th. Can we go? Uh, Thanksgiving's the following week. Can we go? Go 26th? after Thanksgiving? 26th. Go. Okay. That's the Monday. That's the Monday after Thanksgiving? Following holiday. Right. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's shoot for that. Then. And, and Brett, maybe, we, maybe uh, input from you will be the determining factor whether we actually do that or not, if uh, your guys can well, we accumulate the information that he wants. Yep, we can do that. Okay. I, I would like to clarify on, on that subsection 18 that that only deals with front yards. And anybody who lives on a corner lot, so be either side yard as well, doesn't affect backyards. It's just that front yard from the front of the house out to the right of where, out to the sidewalk. Okay. So I don't want people to... Well, to, the, to, side to yard, yeah. the side yard is, is not impacted. Only, only if you're on a side street, if it's right. impacted. Otherwise, it, it okay. is not. Okay. Um, I would also maybe suggest that we have printed copies of this proposed ordinances available here at city hall and and if american news would say that that people could pick up that so they could look at the entire thing if they're not ready to look on the web so just do the best we can to get the information out uh you know our experience uh, here is uh, we haven't had as much grief with the public over making the wrong decision as much as if we've made decisions without people knowing it's coming Right. Uh, so let's make sure uh, everybody has a chance to look at this, and and uh, then we'll talk it over and see what's right. Yeah, I'll try to. There are some really good points in the ordinance, and mm-hmm. I appreciate your clarification on that uh, front yard, side yard uh, matter. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, the cooperation from your department is excellent. appreciate that. Okay, and thanks, uh, Alan, for uh, spending the day giving this some deep thought. Yeah, thank you. All right. Uh, item B, uh, we have the proposed uh, acceptance of the contract uh, for the library with uh, Brown County. Their uh, $12,000 uh, uh, check they write us each year for uh, their residents to be able to use it uh, to entertain a motion to approve that. So moved. Second. So motion Ronin, second by Remley. Questions, May one. All in favor then say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Uh, we have... Uh, Transportation, ride line people here with us. Uh, funding agreements with the Department of Transportation submitted uh, uh, to be authorized for signature. You want to tell us what we're doing here, please? Okay, we have uh, four 5339 grants that uh, we had applied for and, and are receiving those grants now. First one is for rolling stock, uh, that is to purchase three new buses, a 30 passenger a 14 plus 2 and a 16 plus 2 bus. Um, the second one is for security cameras for all the vehicles and the facility, obviously for safety reasons. Third one is the shop equipment. We're looking at purchasing a portable hoist and jack system and a new scan tool that is all upgradable. Our current one is not. So the, our newest buses, we cannot even scan to see if they have any issues using our old scan tool. Uh, facility needs uh, heat tape for the eaves troughs, replacing an oil burner in the shop and installing a couple of ceiling fans to help circulate the air to uh, maximize the efficiency of the oil burner. Um, we try to heat the shop all the time with used oil as much as we can until we run out sometimes and then we have to use the uh, natural gas which like Kelvin likes to say you get to uh, put a cooling fan on that thing because it spins so fast to, to heat our shop. Um, and then the third portion of that facility grant was to repair the crumbling driveway into the parking lot and lay down a fresh mat. We did have uh, some assistance with the city crew that came in and put a, a little bit of a mat down on some stuff that was crumbling really bad. Our intention is to expand the, the width of the driveway by three feet to allow for the uh, larger fire trucks to enter in through that driveway. Right now, they're when they're entering using that north driveway on our lot, they are actually going over into the grass area and uh, it's causing a number of problems. So, But these, these grants have all been approved by the uh, DOT and the FTA and it just needs signatures to get in. Is this uh, what you uh, expected and, and is it what you need? Yes, it is. So it's uh, no surprises. No surprises. Okay. They were all allotted for in the budget. Okay. Move to approve. Second. Motion Johnson, second by Bunsenus to authorize signature of those agreements. Questions on any? 
All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Thanks. Thank you. Yep. Uh, the next uh, item, item D, is the appointment of Dick Gertz to the Aberdeen Parks and Recreation Board. Need a motion for that? Moved. Second. Motion business, second by uh, Lundsman. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Appreciation for that. That's uh, a job that takes some time. Uh, they do a lot. Uh, item E is a, a change order and payment related to uh, mill and overlay, Robin. We've got a change order number three in the amount of $1,384.85 for your approval. Some minor minor changes in quantities and the final pay request in the amount of $18,169. Uh, the project went very well this year with, we've got a few minor things we want to address for next year uh, to make sure it goes a little smoother, but a couple minor uh, Warranty items that they'll have to take care of next year. There's a couple spots that are that are not holding together as well as we'd like, and we're going to want them to address that. But there's no reason to hold up the payment. So, we'll be approved. Second. Motion uh, running. Second by Bunsness. Uh, the payment eighteen thousand one hundred dollars. Any questions? Carl. Council Member Remley. Aye. Ronane. Aye. Lundsman. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Bunsness. Aye. Mayor Leveson. All right, motion carries. And uh, another payment, uh, Robin, to B&B &B Contracting for water main work. Okay, this is pay request number one in the amount of $252,220. Uh, probably about three quarters of the main is in. The big item that we have left is the boring under the railroad tracks. Uh, that has been a real challenge for them. Uh, we will be seeing a change order uh, from that portion that amount will is still being determined at this point but uh, they had some difficulties getting under it's a very long bore to get underneath the entire extent of the tracks and there were some challenges with it they are connected and ready to go uh, once we figure out the change order amount for them so they can proceed move to approve second Motion Johnson, second by Lundsman. The amount is $252,220 to B&B. &B. Questions? Carl? Council Member Bunsness? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Lundsman? Aye. Ronane? Aye. Remley? Aye. Mayor Leveson? Aye. Motion carries. Bills tonight, Northwest Energy Utility, $68,003. U.S. Bank credit card, $29,681. AT&T cell phone for October, $1,063. Lime smudge, sludge removal at the water plant, uh, payment to Morrison, $19,398. Copier uh, fee to Marco, $80. And we have fire pump training per diem payments of $156 to Dave Volek, Brett Ledemore, Eric Schultz, and John Quinn. And $153 to ambulance uh, uh, training. Uh, per diem to Luke Nelson, J and K mowing abatements thirty seven, and UPS charges of eighty two. Moved. Second. Motion Bunsness and <laughs> second by Lundsman. Questions on any? Carl. Councilmember Remley. Aye. Ronane. Aye. Lundsman. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Bunsness. Mayor Leveson. Aye. Motion carries. Lynn. I have no oral report this evening. Okay. Uh, anything for the public session before we break to executive session? If not, uh, we need a motion. Moved. Motion, uh, Bunsman, second by Lundsman to uh, go to executive session. All in favor say aye. 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 